Among the Rice Fields by Lawrence Hope Read for LibriVox.org by April Hill She was fair as a passion flower, but little of love he knew. Her lucent eyes were like amber wine, and her eyelids stained with blue. He called them the gates of fair desire, and the lakes where beauty lay. But I looked into them once and saw the eyes of beasts of prey. He praised her teeth that were small and white as lilies upon his lawn, while I remembered a tiger's fangs that met in a speckled fawn. She had her way, a lover the more, and I had a friend the less. For long there was nothing to do but wait and suffer his happiness. But now I shall choose the sharpest Chris, and nestle it in her breast. For dead, he is drifting down to sea, and his own hand wrought his rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Anecdote of the Jar by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp I placed a jar in Tennessee, and round it was upon a hill. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it, and sprawled around, no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground, and tall and of a port and air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare. It did not give of bird or bush, like nothing else in Tennessee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Arizona by John Gould Fletcher this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Arizona The Windmills The windmills, like great sunflowers of steel, lift themselves proudly over the straggling houses, and at their feet the deep blue-green alfalfa cuts the desert like the stroke of a sword. Yellow melon flowers crawl beneath the withered peach trees. A date palm throws its heavy fronds of steel against the scoured metallic sky. The houses, double-roofed for coolness, cower amid the manzanita scrub. A man with jingling spurs walks heavily out of a vine-bowered doorway, mounts his pony, rides away. The windmills stare at the sun. The yellow earth cracks and blisters. Everything is still. In the afternoon, the wind takes dry waves of heat and tosses them, mingled with dust, up and down the streets, against the belfry with its green bells. And after sunset, when the sky becomes a green and orange fan, the windmills, like great sunflowers on dried stalks, stare hard at the sun they cannot follow. Turning, turning, forever turning in the chill night wind that sweeps over the valley, with a shriek and the clank of the pumps groaning beneath them, and the choking gurgle of tepid water. Mexican Quarter By an alley lined with tumble-down shacks and street lamps askew, half-sputtering, feebly glimmering on gutters, choked with filth and dogs scratching their mangy backs, half-naked children are running about, Women puff cigarettes in black doorways. Crickets are crying. Men slouch sullenly into the shadows. Behind a hedge of cactus, the smell of a dead horse mingles with the smell of tamales frying. And a girl in a black lace shawl sits in a rickety chair by the square of an unglazed window and sees the explosion of the stars softly poised on a velvet sky 
and she is humming to herself. Stars, if I could reach you, you are so very clear that it seems as if I would reach you. I would give you all to Madonna's image on the gray plastered altar behind the paper flowers so that Juan would come back to me and we could live again those lazy burning hours, forgetting the tap of my fan and my sharp words, and I would only keep four of you, those two blue-white ones overhead, to hang in my ears, and those two orange ones yonder to fasten on my shoebox. A little further along the street, a man sits stringing a brown guitar. The smoke of his cigarette curls round his head, and he, too, is humming, but other words. Think not that at your windows I wait. New love is better, the old is turned to hate. Fate, fate, all things pass away. Life is forever, youth is for a day. Love again, if you may before the stars are blown out of the sky and the crickets die babylon and samarkand are mud walls in waste of sand rain in the desert the huge red buttress mesa over yonder is merely a far-off temple where the sleepy sun is burning its altar fires of pinion and of toyon for the day the old priests sleep white shrouded their pottery whistles lie beside them the prayer sticks closely feathered on every mummied face there glows a smile the sun is rolling slowly beneath the sluggish folds of the sky serpents coiling uncoiling blue-black sparked with fires the old dead priests feel in the thin dried earth that is heaped about them above the smell of scorching oozy pinion the acrid smell of rain and now the showers surround the mesa like a troop of silver dancers, shaking their rattles, stamping, chanting, roaring, whirling, extinguishing the last red wisp of light. Clouds across the canyon. Shadows of clouds march across the canyon, shadows of blue hands passing over a curtain of flame. Clutching, staggering, upstriking, darting in blue-black fury, to where pinnacles, green and orange, await. The winds are battling and striving to break them. Then lightnings spit and flicker. The peaks seem a dance of scarlet demons, flitting amid the shadows. Gray rain curtains wave afar off. Wisps of vapor curl and vanish. The sun throws soft shafts of golden light over rose buttressed palisades. Now the clouds are a lazy procession, blue balloons bobbing solemnly over black dappled walls, where rise sharp fretted golden roofed cathedrals exultantly and split the sky with light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn by Siegfried Sassoon Read for LibriVox.org October's bellowing anger breaks And cleaves the bronzed battalions of the stricken wood In whose lament I hear a voice that grieves For battle's fruitless harvest And the feud of outraged men their lives are like the leaves scattered in flocks of ruin tossed and blown along the westering furnace flaring red o oh, martyred youth and manhood overthrown the burden of your wrongs is on my head end of poem this recording is in the public domain brotherhood by Edwin Markham Read for LibriVox by Drew Johnson The crest and crowning of all good Life's final star is brotherhood For it will bring again to earth Her long-lost posy and mirth Will send new light on every face A kingly power upon the race Until it come we men are slaves 
and travel downward to the dust of graves. Come, clear the way, then clear the way. Blind creeds and kings have had their day. Break the dead branches from the path. Our hope is in the aftermath. Our hope is in heroic men, star-led to build the world again. Make way for brotherhood, make way for man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Comic Insects by the Reverend Francis Andrew Spilsbury Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Julia Niedermeyer Preface Oh wonder I much what this book contains! Can insects talk, and do they have brains? I always thought that these queer little things were made up entirely of legs, wings, and stings. A black beetle teach me, and what, bumblebee, in all the wide world can you say unto me? And surely a caterpillar never has read? With green leaves for books he would eat them instead, while neither a moth nor a spider could tell how a pen should be held or correctly could spell. And as for poor Snaily, it's more than absurd. He never could read a one-syllable word. But I've heard of the school board, and now it's appalling to think that a moth or a snail may be calling and telling me too, as the little eyes glisten, the funny wee lessons, if only I listen. Yes, they talk in a language that all is their own, and here into English you'll find it has grown, where pictures will shew and the rhymes they will say, how insects can work, talk and laugh and be gay. How queer a procession is passing this way, of insects all talking. Come, hear what they say. The sight is as strange as the words they are true, and you laugh as they offer the lessons to you. The Caterpillar I'm a caterpillar green, not the prettiest you have seen, and my chrysalis I enter rather love. Though I know that in the spring I shall rise on feathered wing in the costume of a fascinating moth. Little likeness you will spy with the cleverest little eye twixt your green-coated friend of today and the airy form that sails when the golden sunlight pales and the owl flies abroad for his prey. Yet the same we are indeed, though the riddle's hard to read, one, the moth and the caterpillar green, and still stranger things than this, which no little one should miss, in the picture book of nature can be seen. So I think, my little friend, if you'll only deign to lend your ear to these few words that I say, never again will you rely for convictions on the eye, as appearances have often led astray. The Moth Oh, what a beautiful moth am I! Colors so gay! And sparkling each eye. Nobody ever would guess, I ween, I once was a caterpillar all in green. I've taken me feathers of brightest hue, with silver and gold I've decked me too. No, no, you never would guess, I ween, I once was a caterpillar all in green. With a tardy foot no longer I crawl, neath the shady leaves or on ivied wall, but Joyously floating in airy height, I wander abroad in the pale moonlight. Or join the elves as they dance and sing in the circle green of the fairy ring. Or tease a poor daisy that's trying to keep its big yellow eye from my curious peep. But sometimes I fly to a treacherous light that mimics a star in a darkling night. And too late I learn, with my poor singed wings, the evil that want of discretion oft brings. The snail. Poor little snail, how very pale, your cheek is blanched with fear. What horrid dread has made you shed so many a slimy tear? Come, faster crawl along the wall, leave care behind, all's well. That seeming pack upon your back is near an empty shell. 
Come, smile again, and let the rain of tears at once be dry. Faint-hearted quiet, and far from right, before you are heard to cry. No one will doubt who thinks about this great world spinning round, that all have hours when sorrow's showers make April all around. But May and June follow full soon, and joy succeeds to sorrow. So dry the tear, and from the year, your cheering lesson borrow. Ah, Snaily, see, to you and me, our burdens oft appear much heavier far than what they are when we give way to fear. The bee. Buzz, 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 over blossoms heavy laden with the treasures. Hear its music as it rifles from the flowers their seeming trifles. We may watch it in the sunshine at our leisure. See, their secrets it is spying, in the tinted depths while prying, as it works through the long summer day. Be in earnest in your quest, hearty toil brings well-earned rest, seems the burden of its light-hearted lay. Lessons here of self-reliance, and defense but not defiance, as volunteers are taught by the bee. As it works on active wing, self-protected with its sting, Tis a grand working model, good to see, pointing out how each is sharing in the common task, and bearing his just portion where no idler is seen. All are busy in the hive where these happy workmen thrive, and they are loyal, every one to their queen. The Black Beetle Oh dear, oh dear, I sadly fear this poor black beetle's ill, and to him now no use I trow. Is the cleverest doctor's skill. No medical sage his pain can assuage. You can see at a glance how bad he's made himself. All through his pelf, isn't it dreadfully sad? For wandering wide on the floor he spied last night when the cook was asleep, and rejoiced to find some cucumber rind, and now no more he will creep. Yes, sad though it be. This little B.B. would follow his own appetite. He could never say no when it tempted him so. His appetite is serve him right. And thus, tearfully, he begs you and me. His case is a warning to mind. Cucumber at night to regard with fright and never to eat up the rind. The spider. Sp- uh, there's- Ooh. Horrible forms that creep and crawl and hang their webs from ceiling and wall, from leaf and fern as they joy in the breeze, from moss grown arch and ivy clad trees, and catch the flies, the poor little things, that carelessly use their gossamer rings. It makes one shudder to think of the fate that giddy blue bottles and gnats may await. Yet wonder we must as we watch them spread the beautiful nets with their silken thread, and happier feel at the sign of that power that guides each to weave such a fairy-like bower, and think of that hand that no eye can see which fashioned these insects and made you and me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Consecration by Emily Dickinson Read for LiverVox.org by Anna Goldsmith Proud of my broken heart since thou didst break it, Proud of the pain I did not feel till thee, Proud of my night since thou with moons dost slake it, Not to partake of thy passion, my humility. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dawn by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Jerry Erickson. Ecstatic bird songs pound the hollow vastness of the sky with metallic clinkings, beating color up into it at a far edge, beating it, beating it, with rising triumphant ardor, stirring it into warmth, quickening in it a spreading change, bursting wildly against it as dividing the horizon. A heavy sun lifts himself, is lifted, 
bit by bit above the edge of things, runs free at last out into the open, lumbering, glorified in full release upward. Songs cease. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Despondency by Louisa May Alcott Read for LibriVox.org by Dina Rhodes Silent and sad when all are glad And the earth is dressed in flowers When the gay birds sing till the forests ring As they rest in woodland bowers Oh, why these tears and these idle fears For what may come tomorrow? The birds find food from God so good, and the flowers know no sorrow. If he clothes these and the leafy trees, will he not cherish thee? Why doubt his care? It is everywhere, though the way we may not see. Then why be sad when all are glad, and the world is full of flowers? With the gay birds sing, make life all spring, and smile through the darkest hours. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Farmer's Bride by Charlotte Mew Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Three summers since I chose a maid, Too young, maybe, but more's to do at harvest time Than buy it and woo. When us was wed, she turned afraid of love and me and all things human, like the shut of a winter's day. Her smile went out, and twasn't a woman, more like a little frightened fay. One night in the fall, she runned away. Out among the sheep, her be, they set, should properly have been a bed. But sure enough, she wasn't there, lying awake with her wide brown stare. So over seven acre field and up along across the down we chased her, flying like a hare before our lanterns. To church town, all in a shiver and a scare, we caught her, fetched her home at last, and turned the key upon her fast. She does the work about the house as well as most, but like a mouse, happy enough to chat and play with birds and rabbits and such as they so long as men folk keep away not near not near her eyes beseech when one of us comes within reach the women say that beasts in stall look round like children at her call i've hardly heard her speak at all shy as a leveret swift as he straight and slight as a young larch tree Sweet as the first wild violet she, to her wild self, but what to me? The short days shorten, and the oaks are brown, the blue smoke rises to the low gray sky, one leaf in the still air falls slowly down, a magpie's spotted feathers lie on the black earth, spread white with rime. The berries redden up to Christmas time. What's Christmas time without there be some other in the house than we? She sleeps up in the attic there, alone, poor maid. Tis but a stair betwixt us. Oh, my God, the down, the soft young down of her, the brown, the brown of her, her eyes, her hair. Her hair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. For the Fallen by Lawrence Binion. Read for LibriVox.org by Carol Box. With proud thanksgiving, a mother for her children, England mourns for her dead across the sea. Flesh of her flesh they were, spirit of her spirit, fallen in the cause of the free. Solemn the drums thrill, 
death or gust and royal sings sorrow up into immortal spheres there is music in the midst of desolation and a glory that shines upon our tears they went with songs to the battle they were young straight of limb true of eye steady and aglow they were staunch to the end against odds uncounted they fell with their faces to the foe they shall not grow old as we that are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them they mingle not with their laughing comrades again they sit no more at familiar tables of home they have no lot in our labour of the daytime they sleep beyond england's foam but where our desires are and our hopes profound felt as a wellspring that is hidden from sight to the innermost heart of their own land they are known as the stars are known to the night as the stars that shall be bright when we are dust moving in marches upon the heavenly plain as the stars that are starry in the time of our darkness to the end to the end they remain end of poem this recording is in the public domain God is our guide, by George Lovelace, read for LibriVox.org by Rhys Harrison. God is our guide, from field, from wave, from plough, from anvil, and from loom. We come our country's rights to save, speak a tyrant faction's doom. We raise the watchword liberty, we will, we will, we will be free. God is our guide, no swords we draw, we kindle not war's battle fires, by reason, union, justice, law, we claim the birthright of our sires, we raise the watchword liberty, we will, we will, we will be free. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. I many times thought peace had come by Emily Dickinson. Read for LibriVax.org by Jen Nee. JenniferAwesome.com I many times thought peace had come when peace was far away, as wrecked men deem they sight the land at center of the sea, and struggle slacker but to prove, as hopelessly as I, how many the fictitious shores before the harbor be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Dina Rhodes If you can keep your head when all about you Are losing theirs and blaming it on you If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you But make allowance for their doubting too if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, 
if all men count with you but none too much if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run yours is the earth and everything that's in it and which is more you'll be a man my son end of poem this recording is in the public domain I'm Nobody, Who Are You? by Emily Dickinson, read for liverbox.org by Anna Goldsmith. I'm Nobody, Who Are You? Are you a nobody too? Then there's a pair of us, don't tell. They banish us, you know. How dreary to be a somebody, how public like a frog, to tell your name the live long day to an admiring bog. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Joe Hill's Last Will by Joe Hill A recording for LibriVox.org by Reese Harrison My will is easy to decide, for there is nothing to divide. My kin don't need to fuss and moan, moss does not cling to a rolling stone. My body, oh, if I could choose, I would want to ashes it reduce, and let the merry breezes blow my dust to where some flowers grow. Perhaps some fading flower then would come to life and bloom again. This is my last and final will. Good luck to all of you. Joe Hill End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Narcissus by James Elroy Flecker Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug O thou with whom I dallied through all the hours of noon, Sweet water boy, more pallid than any watery moon, Above thy body turning, white lily buds were strewn, Alas the silver morning, alas the golden noon, Alas the clouds of sorrow, the waters of despair, I sought thee on the morrow, and never found thee there. Since first I saw thee, splendid, since last I called thee, fair, My happy ways have ended by waters of despair. The pool that was thy dwelling I hardly knew again, So black it was, and swelling with bitter wind and rain. Amid the reeds I lingered between desire and pain, Till evening rosy-fingered, beckoned to night again. Yet once, when sudden quiet had visited the skies, and stilled the stormy riot, I looked upon thine eyes. I saw they wept and trembled with glittering mysteries, but yellow clouds assembled, redarkening the skies. O oh, listless thou art lying in waters cool and sweet, while I, Dumb brother, dying, faint in the desert heat. Though thou dost love another, still let my lips entreat. Men call me fair, O oh brother, and women honey sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October by Robert Frost Read for LibriVox by Jerry Erickson O hushed October morning mild, Thy leaves have ripened to the fall, Tomorrow's wind, if it be wild, Should waste them all. The crows above the forest call, Tomorrow they may form and go, O hushed October morning mild, Begin the hours of this day slow. Make the day seem to us less brief, Hearts not averse to being beguiled, Beguile us in the way you know. Release one leaf at break of day, At noon release another leaf, One from our trees, one far away. Retard the sun with gentle mist, And chant the land with amethyst. Slow, slow, for the grapes' sake, If they were all, Whose leaves already are burnt with frost, whose clustered fruit must else be lost, for the grape's sake, 
along the wall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our House by Christopher Morley Read for LibriVox.org by Laura Armentrout It should be yours if I could build The quaint old dwelling I desire With books and pictures bravely filled And chairs beside an open fire White paneled rooms with candles lit I lie awake to think of it. A dial for the sunny hours, A garden of old-fashioned flowers, Say, marigolds and lavender, And mignonette and feverfew, And Judas tree and maiden hair, And candy tuff, and thyme and rue, All these for you to wander in, A Chinese carp called mandarin, Waving a sluggish silver fin. Deep in the moat so tame he comes To lip your fingers offering crumbs. Tall chimneys like long listening ears, White shutters, ivy green and thick, And walls of ruddy Tudor brick Grown mellow with the passing years. And windows with small leaded panes, Broad window seats for when it rains. A big blue bowl of potpourri, and yes, a Spanish chestnut tree to coin the autumn's minted gold. A summer house for drinking tea, all these, just think, for you and me. A staircase of the old black wood, cut in the days of Robin Hood, and banisters worn smooth as glass down which your hand will lightly pass. A piano with pale yellow keys for wistful twilight melodies and dusty bottles in a bin, all these for you to revel in. But when? Ah, oh, well, until that time, we'll inhabit this house of rhyme. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reluctance by Robert Frost. Read for LibriVox.org by Jerry Erickson. Out through the fields and the woods, and over the walls I have wended. I have climbed the hills of view, and looked at the world, and descended. I have come by the highway home and lo, it is ended. The leaves are all dead on the ground, save those that the oak is keeping, to ravel them one by one, and let them go scraping and creeping out over the crusted snow, when others are sleeping. And the dead leaves lie huddled and still, no longer blown hither and thither. The last lone aster is gone, the flowers of the witch hazel wither, the heart is still aching to seek, but the feet question whither. Ah, when to the heart of man was it ever less than a treason to go with the drift of things, to yield with a grace to reason, and bow and accept the end of a love or a season. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Roundel by H. L. Mencken Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp If love were all and we could cheat all gods but Cupid of their due, our joy in life would be complete. We'd only live that we might woo, instead as now that we might eat. And every lover would be true, if love were all. Yet if we found our bread and meat in kisses, it would please but few. Soon life would grow a cloying sweet, if love were all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Twins by Henry Sembrook Lee 
Read for LibriVox.org by Claudia Salto. In form and feature, face and limb, I grew so like my brother that folks got taking me for him, and each for one another. It puzzled all our kith and kin. It reached a fearful pitch, for one of us was born a twin, yet not a soul knew which. One day, to make the matter worse, before our names were fixed, as we were being washed by nurse, we got completely mixed. And thus, you see, by fate's decree, or rather nurse's whim, my brother John got christened me, and I got christened him. This fatal likeness even dogged my footsteps when at school, and I was always getting flogged, for John turned out a fool. I put this question fruitlessly to everyone I knew. What would you do if you were me to prove that you were you? Our close resemblance turned the tide of my domestic life, for somehow my intended bride became my brother's wife. In fact, year after year the same absurd mistakes went on and when i died the neighbors came and buried brother john end of poem this recording is in the public domain verse by taj muhammad by lawrence hope Read for LibriVox.org by April Hill When first I loved, I gave my very soul Utterly unreserved to love's control But love deceived me, wrenched my youth away And made the gold of life forever gray Long I lived lonely Yet I tried in vain, with any other joy, to stifle pain. There is no other joy I learned to know, and so returned to love as long ago. Yet I, this little while, ere I go hence, love very lightly now in self-defense. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. When the Frost is on the Pumpkin by James Whitcomb Riley. Read for LibriVox.org by Alex Voss. AlexVoss.com. When the Frost is on the Pumpkin and the Fodder's in the Shock, and you hear the Cayuk and Gobble of the Strutting Turkey Cock, and the Clacking of the Guineas, and the Clucking of the Hens, and the Rooster's Hallelujah as he tiptoes on the fence, oh, it's then the time a feller is a-feeling at his best, with the rising sun to greet him from a night of peaceful rest, as he leaves the house bare-headed, and goes out to feed the stock when the Frost is on the Pumpkin and the Fodder's in the Shock. There's something kind of hearty like about the atmosphere when the heat of summer's over and the coolin' fall is here. Of course we miss the flowers and the blossoms on the trees and the mumble of the hummingbirds and buzzing of the bees, but the air is so appetizing and the landscape through the haze of a crisp and sunny morning of the early autumn days is a picture that no painter has the color in to mock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. The husky, rusty rustle of the tossels of the corn and the rasping of the tangled leaves as golden as the morn. The stubble and the furries, kind of lonesome-like, but still a-preaching sermons to us of the barns they growed to fill. The straw stack in the meadow and the reaper in the shed. The hosses in their stalls below, the clover overhead. Oh, it sets my heart a-clickin' like the tickin' of a clock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. Then your apples all is gathered, and the ones a feller keeps is poured around the cellar floor in red and yellow heaps, and your cider makin's over, 
and your women folks is through with their mints and apple butter and their sauce and sausage too i don't know how to tell it but if such a thing could be as the angels wantin boardin and that call around on me i'd want to accommodate em all the whole endurin flock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock end of poem this recording is in the public domain When the Year Grows Old by Edna St. Vincent Millay Read for LibriVox.org by Laura Armentrout I cannot but remember when the year grows old. October, November, how she disliked the cold. She used to watch the swallows go down across the sky and turn from the window with a little sharp sigh. And often when the brown leaves were brittle on the ground, and the wind in the chimney made a melancholy sound, she had a look about her that I wish I could forget, the look of a scared thing sitting in a net. Oh, beautiful at nightfall the soft spitting snow, and beautiful the bare boughs rubbing to and fro. But the roar of the fire and the warmth of fur and the boil of the kettle were beautiful to her. I cannot but remember when the year grows old, October, November, how she disliked the cold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Where the Mind is Without Fear by Rabindranath Tagore Read for LibriVox.org by Dan Silver Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. Worthwhile by Lawrence Hope Read for LibriVox.org by April Hill I asked of my desolate shipwrecked soul, Wouldst thou rather never have met The one whom thou lovest beyond control, And whom thou adorest yet? Back from the senses, the heart, the brain, came the answer swiftly thrown what matter the price we would pay it again we have had we have loved we have known end of poem this recording is in the public domain in flanders fields by major john mccrae Read for LibriVox.org by Carol Box In Flanders fields the poppies blow Between the crosses, row on row, That mark our place, and in the sky The larks, still bravely singing, Fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, Loved and were loved, and now, we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, To you from failing hands we throw the torch, Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, We shall not sleep, though poppies grow In Flanders' fields. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
We Shall Keep the Faith by Moina Bell Michael, read for LibriVox.org by Carol Box. Oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish, too, the poppy red that grows on fields where valour led. It seemed to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honour of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught, we'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.